Thank you.
as an up as an update for the Division I National Semifinal Game 2 post-game press conference featuring the South Carolina Gamecocks, we'll hear from an opening statement from Coach Staley and follow up with questions from student athletes Aaliyah Boston and Raven Johnson. The locker room after the cooling off period has um, concluded will be open for interviews with the other student athletes. As a reminder for those in the room, please make sure your cell phones are on silent. We'll get started shortly. When raising your hand, when called upon, please state your name and affiliation. There are wireless microphones on each side of the room. Please wait for the microphone to reach you before stating your question. For those joining us remotely, please use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you're called on for your question, please unmute your line and state your name and affiliation. Again, we'll, be, we'll begin momentarily. The South Carolina locker room is now open for media, and the team is headed this way. If possible, in that back row, can we have you guys clear out as well so the microphone holders are able to move between the two areas?
Welcome to the Division I National Semifinal Game 2 post-game press conference featuring the South Carolina Gamecocks. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach Staley and follow up with questions for the student athletes. The student athletes will then be dismissed and we'll open up those questions for Coach Staley. Um, congratulations to, uh, to Iowa, played a tough game. Um, man, I just think Dallas put on a good show when it comes to the Final Four. Um, sh special shout out to the police officers who did a great job moving us around the city. We'll now open it up for questions for the student athletes. We're going to start with Nancy. And that'll be to your right, ladies. Nancy Armour, USA Today. Um, Aaliyah, what were they doing to you that maybe that you haven't seen other teams do before? And you could come back for a fifth year because of COVID, and I'm just wondering what your plans are going to be for next year. Yeah, I'll start with that one. Haven't decided as yet. And I don't really think they were doing anything different. I think, um, you know, they were just being very physical. Um, I think part of that, I feel like every time teams get ready to play us, you know, there's always that agenda of we are so physical, you know, we can take all the aggression. And so I think that that was being let go a lot. But I, I mean, I don't think it was anything different. I think it was just a very physical game. Our next question is going to be in the back corner to the left, ladies. Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Aliyah, obviously this is really disappointing and frustrating to end the season like this. But you do have an opportunity to write a different ending because you do have a fifth year. When you said just now that you hadn't decided, did this game put that in the balance? Like, if you had won another title, were you gone for sure? Or had you not actually decided? I mean, this decision is a big decision. Um, I was going to have to really write down the pros and the cons of everything. And so whether we won or not, it would still be something that I would have to consider. Ladies, we're going to go to our far right um, and the front row, please. Uh, Jeremiah Holloway with the state. Um, Aaliyah, that last three that Clark took, uh, she misses it. Uh, you guys didn't, weren't able to corral the rebound. Was that more of a matter of kind of positioning than, than anything else on that play? I mean, it was a long shot and a long rebound. Those can sometimes be really hard just based off how hard it came off the backboard and that shot um, ricocheted off the backboard and it was just really high. And so I, we just weren't in the position to get it. We're going to take a question to our left in the front row, please. Yeah, Jacob Phillips, Daily Gamecock. Raven, for you, this was your first Final Four game that you've been able to play in. Just what was that experience like for you? Um, it was good just being out there. But, um, you know, I didn't, we didn't come out with the outcome. I really want to win for the seniors. Um, but, yeah, I have more years to come, so we're definitely going to be back. Go ahead, Howard, to your right. Howard McDonald at the next. Um, Ali and Raven, one, one for each of you. Um, Raven, you, you have saved your biggest games this year for the biggest opponents. You know, tonight, LSU and UConn are your three double-figure games. Can you just talk about sort of what you've brought to those big matchups? And, Ali, if you could talk a little bit about what you think, what you see out of Raven in those moments. Yeah, I'll start with Aaliyah in the freshie class. The way they just talk to me, the way they just show me what leadership is, and they show me what pro habits is every day. So I definitely um, cherish that every day. And Aaliyah just been in my ear. It gives me a lot of confidence. And also Coach Staley, um, it's not a day Coach Staley's not in my ear, and she also helped me with my confidence. Yeah, um, after the game, you know, I told Raven, I said, this is your team. You know, you've been in the system for two years now. Next year coming up, like, people are going to look to you for that leadership role. So, you know, just allowing her to, you know, giving her that guidance of how to do it. I think this year she's been really um, listening to us, and you can see that during the games. And for her big games, I think Raven's just always ready. You know, she does a great job of trying to pass the ball, making other people open, making them feel included. But tonight, I think she stepped up. She hit some really big threes for us, did a great job running the point position when coach had her in. And so I just think she just steps up. That's just who she is, and next year is going to be really exciting when she's in that full role and she's really leading the team. We have another question to our right, ladies. Jen Hadfield with the next. Um, for both of you, that moment the buzzer goes off, uh, what's going through your head, and then Aaliyah, um, I think I saw from where I was sitting you kind of uh, consoling Zaya or talking to her post game, if, and if you. Um, are comfortable sharing kind of what you told her or what that moment was like for you as well? Yeah, you want to go first or me? You know, when that buzzer went off, it was kind of just like an end of an era, it feels like. You know, we had a special group, um, and so that's kind of just what it felt like. And, you know, Zaya competed for 40 minutes. I mean, she played every single minute of this game. She gave her her all, and I just told her, you know, like, nothing, you can't, 
you can't hang your head low because you did really good. You know, like you kept us in this game, went out with foul trouble. Um, Zai just kept attacking. Um, she hit big shots. And, you know, she worked really hard. Four years went by really fast. But I told her no matter what she does next, she's ready for it. You know, she, she, God has equipped her and she's ready. We're going to take a question from our virtual. David, you are permitted now to talk. David Melandro of Sports Talk Philadelphia. This is for Aaliyah. This game tonight marked the, the last two players of the year. Do you think you guys gained more fans? Um, I mean, I hope I gained some fans. <laughs> but, I mean, I definitely think so. I mean, I think this game just grew women's basketball. I bet a lot of people are watching. There are a lot of people in the crowds. You could hear Iowa fans and our fans. Um, everybody was just super excited for this game. I think it was a great game. So, But, I mean, I, I hope so. And to our front and the right. Uh, Alan Cole, GameCockScoop.com. Uh, for either of you, now that it's over, now that you have the whole kind of season behind you, what are you going to remember most about this year and playing with this particular team with the whole thing kind of in the rearview mirror? I mean, I'm going to remember a fun year. I mean, I think we had so many great experiences um, just winning. How many games was that? 30. 36 games. Like, I feel like that's unbelievable. You know, Coach told us in the locker room, she was like, this is rare, you know, like teams can't say they did that. And even though this didn't end the way we wanted it to, those 36 games prior to this was really good. Staying to our right. Um, Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, this is for both of you guys. How has um, Coach Staley and her background and her philosophies, how has that shaped you guys as players and as people? And how will you th take that like forward? Yeah, well, in my eyes, I, I, I don't want to make a mistake when Coach Daly's um, coaching, so I always look at her. I'm like, oh, Lord. So it's like she, she, she scares me, honestly, because I want to be, be so perfect to her. But honestly, um, Coach, you know, you can't be perfect. Um, coach, you know, she always say that, you know, just be yourself. And, like, it's things that she asks me in practice, and I'm like, I don't know. And I actually be thinking to myself, like, why would she ask me that? Stuff like that. So honestly, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I'm playing under her because I'm definitely going to develop really well under her. Oh, um, um, playing under Coach Staley, I mean, she's just helped me with my confidence a lot, you know. She's just always been like that second mom, no matter what. You guys are, you guys are lucky here. You get to see me cry. I was planning not to cry. Um, no pictures, please. <laughs> yeah, because they like to run wild with those. <laughs> I better not see one. But honestly, she's just been a great, like a second mom. And on the court, she just motivates you, you know? She always pushes you to be the best person that you can be. You don't have to be perfect, even though Raven, <laughs> you don't have to be perfect. You know, she knows that you make mistakes, but I think she's just like she just helps you every step of the way. She asks you questions if you don't know. She's she goes into more detail. She wants to see you succeed. So yeah. Seriously, no pictures. <laughs> to our right, Mich Michelle, yes. go ahead. Uh, Michelle Smith from the next. Aaliyah, to come into this game unbeaten, do you think that added any pressure or anything extra in the fact that you guys hadn't lost a game this season and had a 42 <coughs> game winning streak? Does that just add anything when you come into this atmosphere? I mean, I think the only pressure is just, you know, you want to go to a national championship game. You want to compete for that. I mean, we were undefeated, but that we kind of had to push that to the back burner because just like you said, we're in the season where you, you don't want to lose, you know. And so we weren't really focused on, oh, our, our streak or how long we've been undefeated. It was really just about, well, we want to compete to go to the next step. Oh, thanks so much. Take a question to our left. Uh, Jerry Longman, the New York Times. Aaliyah, you guys did – Many of the things you always do, you dominated the bench, the offensive rebounding. Where did you see the, the difference was? Where did I see the difference? Um, I think just some of our shots didn't fall tonight. Um, I feel like sometimes we were able to put them on the free throw line, um, and that really wasn't going both ways. But, I mean, our shots just didn't really fall. We have another virtual question. We'll go to Gabrielle Lewis. Gabrielle, your line is open, and now you are permitted to talk. Gabrielle Lewis, the next. Um, just reflecting on the season, you know, what is something, the biggest thing that each of y'all learned this season? 
You want to go first? Yeah, um, leadership role, definitely from the freshie class. Um, the leadership role, like I said, they always show me what pro habits um, were, and they just show me every day what it's like to be a pro. And the way they just talk to us younger players and motivate us, I, I really cherish that. So I'm definitely going to take um, pride in that. And for me, definitely turning the page a lot quicker. Um, don't hang my head too low on something specific. Just turn the page and get to the next thing. Looks like we have one final question virtually. We'll go back to David. David, I'm going to unmute your line again, and please proceed. Can you guys, can both you guys talk about what it was like to be coached by Dawn Staley? <clears throat> can we start with Raven? Yeah, like I said, um, uh, I wanted to be, like, in her eyes, I wanted to be perfect. Like, I never wanted to make a mistake, but I'm, I'm learning her more and more. Like, she's learning me more and more. Like, like I said, she was asking me questions, and I always thought, like, why did she ask me this? But, I, you know, I want, I want to be like her one day. I, I look up to her, honestly, little do she know. So I'm definitely going to um, – <laughs> I'm going to, um, you know, talk to Coach and watch film definitely on this game so I can learn. And like I said, we're going to be back. Um, I've just learned to turn the page, compete for 40 minutes, and just continue to be a great teammate. Um, Coach, do you think I became a better passer this, this year? All right. <laughs> that was my goal. I really like, wow, that was good. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Congratulations Thank on a great season. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good job, y'all. <clears throat> At this time, we'll open up for questions for Coach Staley. So we just, uh, Maggie Hendricks, Bally Sports, sorry. Um, we just heard Aaliyah talk so much about her teammates this entire, through this entire thing. What does that say about not just the person she is on the court, but off it too? I mean, she's a complete person. Like, she's a great human being. And um, you could tell that she's got great parenting and a great foundation that um, she shares herself. Like she's a sacrificer, she's a great friend, she's a great teammate. Um, she is somebody that you wanna build your program around because you, you know it's safe. And she's, she's always gonna make the right decision for our team, even if it is a detriment to her personally. Coach to our left, I mean, excuse me, to our right. <laughs> Nancy, go ahead. <laughs> Don, Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, if Aaliyah does ask you for your opinion about what she should do next year, what will you tell her? And if this was her last game in South yeah. Carolina, can you describe what she has meant yeah. to your program? Um, I'd tell her to go. I mean, there are, you know, there are defenses that are played against her that won't allow her to play her game. Um, and then... It's hard to officiate that. It's hard to officiate that. So I would tell her to go. She's, she's, she's great. I mean, she's ready. She's ready. She's ready to um, see single coverage. She's ready to um, make, the, make the next step to the, you know, to the league. Um, I mean, she's meant everything to our program. She has been the cornerstone of our program for the past four years. Um, she, she elevated us. She raised the standard of how to approach basketball. She's never had a bad day. She's never come into practice sulking. She's always just the person that you saw. So very, very consistent. And I slept very well knowing she was with, she was with our program. And I'll sleep well knowing that she's okay and she will definitely make her mark at the next level. We're going to stay to our right in um, the front row, please. Michael Robertson, HoopFeed.com, and the African American Athlete. So, Coach, we talked earlier when you guys played Stanford, and uh, uh, she was, Aaliyah was dealing with foul trouble, and I asked, did you have to say anything to her? So, in this case, with zero points at halftime, did you have to say anything to her to get her going? No. I mean, she knows, she knows how to handle foul trouble. She knows, how to, she knows what needs to get done. But again, it's just hard to, you know, it's hard, it's hard for her to move. I think it's hard for us, it's, it's hard to officiate um, the way the game was, was played. It's just hard to officiate. And, you know, when she's, you know, when she's two for nine, you know, two fouls, three fouls, two fouls in the first couple of minutes of the, 
first quarter, it's hard. I mean, she's a big part of what we do. We're going to go to our left, Coach. Left. Coach, uh, AJ Jones, BS3 TV, KYLK Radio out of Houston. Um, a lot of times, other coaches, your colleagues, have sitting in that spot and talked about you all being bullies. What's the truth about your team? The truth about our team, okay? It's a good question, okay? Um, we're not bar fighters. We're not thugs. We're not monkeys. We're not street fighters. Um, this team exemplifies how you need to approach basketball on the court and off the court. And I do think that I do think that that's sometimes brought into the game and it and it and it hurts. Okay? Um and I do think that some of uh I'm gonna say it because I said I was gonna say it whether we lost or whether we won. Some of the people in the media, when you're gathering in public, you're saying things about our team and you're being heard and it's being brought back to me, okay? And these are the people that write nationally for our, for our sport. So you can, you can not like our team, okay? You can not like me. Um, but when you say things that you probably should be saying um, in your home, on the phone, or texting, out in public, and you're being heard, and you are a national writer for our sport, it just confirms, just confirms what, what we already know. So watch what you say when you're in public and you're talking about my team in particular. Just watch what you say about our team because it's wrong. You, you got young lives who are really, if you really knew them, if you really knew them, like you really want to know other players that represent this game, you would think differently. So don't judge us by the color of our skin, okay? Judge us by how we approach the game and you may not like how we play the game, may not like it. That's the way we play. That's the way we. That's the way I coach. I'm not changing. We found success in it, and maybe some days, like today, we end up on the losing side of the, the stick. But guess what? We live to see another day. We live to see um, the comeback next year and try to do this again. Because I'm not changing. I'm not changing. But I hear you. I hear you, I hear you. Um, Cause I do have friends in the media, whether you believe it or not, I do have some friends in the media. So for those of you who were at, whatever, whatever event you were at that was nearby this arena yesterday, um, you were heard, you were overheard talking about our team. So. Coach, we're gonna take a, a question from the right hand side, Howard, go ahead. Hey, Dawn. Howard Magdal at the next. Um, to, to talk about Raven a little bit and just, you know, I know when we talked it, after UConn, it was a time where she stepped forward. I wonder whether you think her ability to do that then helped her prepare for what she did tonight and just generally speaking how you see her as a potential leader for this team going forward. Raven's our future. I mean, Raven has a bright future. She's, you know, she's got some great instincts as a point guard. And she just mentioned... I ask her sometimes why. Why did you do that? And I ask why because I like to know her process. I like to know what she's thinking, and it helps me teach her a little bit better. Um, she doesn't know sometimes she doesn't know why because she's got really, really, really good instincts. So when she's able to um, keep those instincts the way they are, but also just be a little bit more patient about um, seeing other options. She's gonna be a, a terrific point guard. So she's a she's a she's a pro in the making, and I'm super proud that she she's on our team and she's gonna represent our you know our our team and our you know our university. 
that back right hand corner coach. Thank you very much. Dawn, you talked the other day a lot about your faith. So in this moment, I want to ask, what is it that you would say to the kids back in South Carolina about, you know, I've heard you say many times, what yeah. God has for you is for you, yeah. right? Yeah. What would you say to them about overcoming disappointments like this yeah. to use that setback as a setup for what's ahead in the future? Yeah, I mean, I, I just don't give honor to God when we win. Obviously, I, we want to win all the games. He's the reason for all seasons, you know? You know, it's, it's not harvest time yet. It's not harvest time. So I, I take the good with the bad. Like, I'm a, you know, I'm a sore loser, but I, I'm, a, I'm a gracious loser. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Iowa played a, had a terrific game plan, um, and we, we didn't get it done. We, there were opportunities. There were three turnovers we had in a row that, that were somewhat of a game changer for us that if we had them back, you know, we could probably open up a lead that would have put us over the top, but wasn't in the cards. It was, you know, we did that to other teams and we ended up winning. So we got to take it, you know, we got to take the good with the bad. I'm never, I'm never going to turn my back on the game of basketball. It's just giving too much to me. I'm still, I'm still favored, still favored. Coach, we're going to take a question on the backhand side. Lindsay, go ahead. Don, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Um, can you talk a little bit about Caitlin? You know, obviously you watched a ton of film of her to prep for this game. Was she better than you anticipated in person? No, she was on point. I mean, she was, she was, she was everything that um, we saw on film. Um, she, was, she, she, she was everything, like she assists, um, uh, points, turnovers. All of them. I mean, I think she gave, she she was she ran the gamut of who she is as a player, um, and she thread the needle. I mean, I thought she um, Sonano. I thought she had a great connection with her, and if we could have probably not allowed her to Sonano have a little bit, a little more, a little less um, opportunities, it, it could have flipped the other way. I think she was the she was the one that put them over the top with her with her contributions, because we had everybody else in check. We're going to go to our right with Michelle. Go ahead. Don Michelle Smith. A lot of people tonight that I know told me they were watching this game who don't watch women's basketball a lot. You guys didn't come out on the end that you wanted, but what do you hope you guys showed the country and people who maybe were watching women's basketball who don't watch it a lot tonight? Well, I hope they saw, you know, some, some individual um, performances that will bring them back. I hope they saw, you know, you know, the grittiness of a team that was undefeated. And I hope they want they want to learn a lot more about um, not just us. I mean LSU and what Kim Mulkey has done this this season and getting to a, a national championship game. Um, I mean there was a lot. Virginia Tech and Kenny Brooks and his first time being in the in the in the Final Four. Um, and then just the, the entire tournament. We didn't have, you know, we didn't have all number one seeds here. And I hope they ask why. And then they'll find out that we had some incredible, um, exciting games that led to not everyone number one seed being here. Coach, we're going to take a, a call. Um, excuse me. We're going to take a question from the virtual. David, your line's unmuted and you are permitted to talk. David Melandro, Sports Talk, Philadelphia. Coach, uh, how do you think your players handled the pressure of going undefeated all the way up to tonight and then the performance you guys showed to, to everybody tonight? Yeah, I don't I don't think we I don't think we felt pressure, you know, to win to win the game. I thought we approached it. It felt like any other game. Um, we we just didn't perform, you know. We didn't make more plays than we needed to make, especially down the stretch. And that hasn't been us all season long. But I never, you know, I don't, I don't think our, our players felt pressure, um, any other pressure besides wanting to win a, another basketball game. I'll we'll take a question on our back, right? Okay, Emily Adams at the Greenville News. Um, to have a group of players who have experienced losing so rarely, does it change kind of how you have to coach them through a loss compared to maybe some of those earlier teams you had in your tenure at South Carolina? 
Well, I mean, this is kind of unique because uh, seven of them have a, you know, two of them, two of the seven, they, you know, the decisions made for them. Five out of seven of our seniors and, you know, graduate assistants, they, they have a decision to make. So it's less about this loss and more about, you know, what's next and making the decision on what's next for them. Um, but the returners, um, the returners, I mean, it's, it's, they got to get us back here. This is fun to come to the Final Four um, as a participant. It's fun. It's fun. I don't like coming other than coming as a participant. Um, and I didn't really have to think about that for three years. So let's hope we can get back and, you know, hope the loss felt, they felt it deeply and they'll work hard to get back here. We have a question in our far back on the left-hand side, Coach. Maya Peterson, W Slam. So, Coach, I was here when you were last here in Dallas. I wanted to know first, does it feel different when you walked in to see how much women's basketball has changed? And in that time, you've been able to redefine culture for women's basketball and for your team. How do you keep them motivated for the upcoming year? Um, I mean, to win, to win a national championship is always um, um, an incredible goal. And it's, and it's cool just trying to um, – it's cool just trying to get a, 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 a team, a new team, and you, what makes that team unique um, about working hard and, and getting back to this place. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I, we're not going to have the same team. We're going to have a different team um, that have different characteristics, that have you know, different players – they're going to be put in positions that um, that will fill a void that that's going to be left by some of our seniors. So I'm looking forward to that challenge. Coach, we have a question on your right. Hi, Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, so you mentioned earlier your philosophy in coaching and leading women. How much of that is informed by like growing up in North Philly, playing in the developmental basketball league, and in the pub league? Um. I mean, it's my foundation. I grew up in the projects in North Philly, and um, I mean, you pretty much had to fight for everything, every single thing. And I don't really take anything for granted. I don't, I don't really like handouts. So everything that we do, we have to work for, and that is the mentality that I try to instill in our players, um, and to be disciplined in that. And that's I, I had a mother who was a disciplinarian, so I don't know any other any other way besides just doing things the right way and doing things the way she wanted them done things done. And I'm probably a little more lenient than my mom with with our players um, because I just want I want to meet them where they are and, and help them go where they where they where their hearts desire to go. And coach, we're going to take our last question on your left hand side, please. Uh, Phil Kornblut, Sports Talk Media Network in South Carolina. Just a question about the defensive strategy on uh, Caitlin. What, what was it that you guys were trying to do? And in, in, in the game, did you ever consider anything like a maybe double teaming her to get the ball out yeah. of her hands or anything to, just to change things up with her? Yeah, I mean, she was she was just so well equipped with passing the basketball. I, I thought we had a, we had a couple of uh, miscommunications. Um, and then when you play a player like Caitlin, you just kind of you kind of lose your spacing out there, and you lose who's good where. Like Sonano, you know, anytime she was at the high post, we didn't want to play her at the high post. We wanted to, we wanted to we wanted to clog the middle up a little bit and and beat her to the spot of rolling deep on us. Um, we found ourselves a little high on that at times. At the end of the game, we were going to trap. Um, the ball screen, but they didn't come off a ball screen. Um, so, I mean, it was, it was, we, we put, put a lot of different people on her. I thought we tried to tire her out a little bit um, for four quarters by having our point guards pressure her. And I, I thought she tired out just a little bit, um, but not enough to, not enough to, you know, uh, give us an edge. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank you all.
The Iowa locker room will be open until 1146. Coach and players will be coming to the dais shortly. Welcome to the Division I National Semifinal Game 2 post-game press conference featuring the Iowa Hawkeyes. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach and follow up with questions from the student-athletes. The student-athletes will then be dismissed and we will open up with questions for Coach. Please make sure your cell phones are on silent. Coach, when you are ready, we would love to hear your opening statement. Um, first thing I just want to, you know, South Carolina, unbelievable basketball team and I'm so proud of my women um, because I think they're the only people that really believed. Uh, I don't think anybody else, except for unless you were in black and gold, believed that we were going to win that game. So uh, the women in that circle, they believed. And we prepared all week as if we were going to win this game. Um, before I turn it over to the women, I just want to put my condolences to everybody in Iowa City, Solon. Uh, we had some really bad tornadoes go through there this afternoon, uh, a lot of damage. I don't know if anybody's hurt, um, but certainly, you know, we're thinking about everybody back home. We will now open up for questions for the student athletes. As a reminder, please raise your hand high so that we're able to see you. We're actually going to start with Nancy in the back on your left hand side. Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, Caitlin and Monica, what was it like to be part of this game? Um, and know how much attention it was and did it live up to your own expectations? And then Monica, Dawn said that she thought you were actually the difference maker, that by Caitlin being able to get you down inside, you know, how much did you guys come into the game knowing that that was going to be a factor? Yeah, I thought it was a tremendous game for women's basketball. Um, the crowd was incredible. And, you know, shout out to all the Hawk fans that have traveled down to Dallas. They were so, so amazing and so loud and so fun. Um, I don't think we would be at this point in our season if it wasn't for them. I truly mean that. And I know so many tuned in. Um, and, you know, I think just tonight showed how fun women's basketball is. Um, you know, two really great teams um, that went at it. I'm sure so many people wish this was a series of seven games. That would be really, really fun. Um, and I think, you know, if we continued the series, you know, it might go one way or the other every single time. Um, but, you know, obviously we get, you know, out-rebounded by quite a bit, but we didn't hang our heads. That's all you could do is, you know, we gave up some awards. We fouled when we didn't need to, but, you know, we just came together and said, you know, next play mentality, and that's all you can do, um, really. Yeah, I think that's a tremendous compliment coming from Coach Staley. Um, but I think all the credit goes to my teammates. I mean, they find me in positions that I am the most effective. Um, and they do it game in and game out all the time. Um, the confidence that they have in me is, is quite unreal, truly. So I'm just so proud to be on this team. Um, yeah. We have a question on our left-hand side, the third row. Hey, Molly Kayleen with Adweek. So, Caitlin, you've talked a lot about trust in the past. How did that come into play tonight? Yeah, I think, you know, 
the biggest thing is, you know, knowing how much my teammates trust me. You know, I was given the ball and, you know, kind of the biggest moments of the game on the biggest stage. Um, but also at the same time, uh, you know, my teammates really came through and played huge minutes. I thought Addy and Hannah Stolke were tremendous off the bench. You know, that's a hard position to be in, to be able to sit there and, you know, come in when mom, mom gets fouls. You know, Hannah leaks out for an easy two. Addy comes in and gets two buckets for us. So, um, and then McKenna plays through, you know, getting knocked in the head pretty well and, and then gets the biggest O board of the game. I understand in South Carolina got 25 O boards but there was one O board that really mattered the most and it was McKenna Warnock's um, and you know that kind of sealed the deal for us and we were able to make free throws so um, you know I think it's you know yeah I might score the most points but at the end of the day we aren't anywhere without my teammates and I truly mean that Gabby Marshall doesn't score tonight but her defense was outstanding you know Zaya Cook is a tremendous tremendous player and I thought she was all over her never got discouraged um, you know she comes away with three steals um, so you know I think everybody just you know, did their role. And that's what our team's about is, you know, knowing your role, doing your role, um, and showing up in that every single day. We have a question to our right in the second row. Um, Chloe Peterson, Daily Island. For McKenna, what was, what was going through your head when you got that offensive rebound with, like, less than 30 seconds left? Just get it to Caitlin, honestly. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously we always want to get those O boards, and I'm glad that I could come up with that one. It kind of fell into my lap, and that's kind of what we wanted in those moments anyways. We wanted some of those to kind of bounce our way tonight, and I'm glad it did at that moment. And then I'm glad that Caitlin knocked those free throws down. So We're staying to our right in the front row. Uh, Susan Harmon, hawkfanatic.com. For Monica, um, how – how were you able to get free from all all their size and their mobility? Yeah, I think it was really coming out of the paint. Um, I couldn't really do what I normally did and just post up down there. I really had to come out and set ball screens and try to try to really expose the screen and roll. And I think that worked out pretty well for us. We're moving to our left hand side, the front row. Jacob Phillips, Daily Game Cop. Caitlin, when the buzzer went off, you threw the ball up in the air and just started celebrating. Just what was going through your mind during that, knowing you're going to go play for a national championship? I think just, you know, I'm really, really thankful to be in this position more than anything. And like Coach Bluter said, you know, probably everybody in America picks South Carolina, deservedly so. They've been ranked number one all year. They've won 42 straight basketball games, you know. Um, why wouldn't you pick them? But at the same time, the people in our locker room believed in us. And that's all you need is a, is a belief in one another, um, a confidence in one another, um, you know, and we just do it for the person to our left and our right. Um, we, not, we might not be, you know, we're clearly not as tall as them. We're clearly not as athletic as them. Um, but I think we're a very, very skilled basketball team, you know, that loves one another. Um, and that's going to get you really, really far. We're staying on our left-hand side this first seat. Uh, yeah, Jeff Linder, Cedar Rapids Gazette, for any of the players. How in the world do you get grounded again and get ready to play on, on Sunday? I think it's just, you know, celebrate it for right now, and then we're going to go back and watch some film. Um, it's just a business mentality at this point, and I think we've done a really good job of doing that in the past. Um, you know, Big Ten Tournament prepares you for this, and I think that's kind of how we look at it. So, Staying on our left. Go ahead. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, Caitlin, you've face just about every kind of defense possible when teams try to stop you. What was special about this South Carolina defense and how were you able to get the better of it? Yeah, I think like you said, I have seen a lot of really good defenses. Um, you know, I think the thing was we saw some weaknesses early in the game and that's what we just kept going to. And I think that gives a lot of credit to Coach Bluter because she kept putting us in the same action that was working. Um, and, you know, they were guarding Mon pretty high up, so that was allowing me to get to the rim. I thought we were dragging their, their rim protectors away from the rim where they're used to being. Um, but, honestly, a lot of screening action. Um, I thought we set up a lot of away screens, you know, a lot of down screens, a lot of ball screens. Um, and that's something we saw in film that we thought could work, and I thought, you know, we executed that well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they still made it tough on me. Um, you know, they were all over my shorts. I mean, they created eight turnovers. A few of them were probably forced by myself, and I have the ball in my hands a lot. So, um, you know, they're really, really tremendous. But at the same time, I find confidence in the fact that, you know, I feel like this team has seen just about every defense you can face. Um, so I'm never intimidated going into a game. I don't feel like these girls are ever intimidated. Um, we know we need to be crisp. We need to be clean. And I still don't even think we shot the ball to the best of our ability tonight either. You know, I'm 5 for 17. That's not too hot. Um, probably could have made a few more um, and then I thought they did a really good job on Gabby Marshall she only gets one shot I probably could have got her another shot but um, you know I thought they were you know all over her um, but yeah I mean I think it's just the confidence we find in each other we're going to go to the front row in our right hand side 
Chad Lystico, Des Moines Register. Caitlin, uh, I know you're a hoops junkie. What what did you make of the game plan that you guys had? And did you guys, did you have some input in it uh, as the week went on um, to how to stop them, and then also your off as a, as it pertained to your offense? Yeah, I didn't have any input. Uh, sometimes I give input, and they still don't want it. Um, but <laughs> um, I, our coaches, they've been in this game a really long time. I thought they've had a tremendous game plan, and obvious, obviously they've been working on this scout for quite some time. It's probably you know very obvious that we South Carolina was going to get to this point. And um, I loved our game plan, you know, pack the paint. At times I wasn't really even two feet out of the paint, um, you know, and we were going to live with them making threes. I thought, you know, Johnson came through and, and made some, you know, tough, bat, t- tough threes and situations where they really needed it Um, but we never got discouraged or anything like that so you know I loved our game plan we really packed the paint um, made them earn it around the rim Um, and obviously you know they got some O boards um, but at the same time nobody said we were going to out rebound them you know that would have been you know a lie Um, but you know I thought all we did was just come back down every single time and you know, buy into our defense. And Coach Bluter switched it up quite a bit, too. And I thought that gave them problems. You know, she's always a coach. You know, we're never going to stay in one defense too long. You got to keep switching it up. We're going to stay on our far right. Mitch Vick, KGN, all three. Uh, uh, Kate took me to task a little bit ago. I asked her what it took to and how you survive the waves that were going to come after a, a first quarter. You couldn't ask anything more from. She said, I think we thrived, actually. Do you guys agree with that, that you kind of set the tone and, and kept it the whole game? Due to time, we'll have one person answer. If sure. I can have McKenna do it. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I think obviously coming out and getting that lead right away um, was really awesome. I mean, I don't think that they've been down much this season, and that was a great thing for us. And um, I think we do a great job when we come out starting hot, um, and we definitely did this game. And I'm just really proud of our ability to kind of withstand all their runs at the times and keep and maintain that lead the entire game. So, Far left, Lindsay, please go ahead. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. So, Caitlin, before this game, would you have compared Monica to Draymond Green? Uh, oh. Because during the game, I was getting quite a few texts from basketball people who were saying, you know, this is the she's the difference maker. And <laughs> Monica, I wondered um, if you watched uh, some Draymond Green footage to, to get on- you in this mood. To be honest, no, I would never compare Monica to Draymond. But the person on our team who I would is Kate Martin. She's Mm -hmm. the player that does all the dirty work, you know, sets people up, sets her teammate up, um, is an emotional leader. um, (laughs) So they might have gotten Kate and Mon confused. um, But Monica, probably not so much. We could probably find some different player comps for her. um, But no, I think, you know. Mon such she made some tough baskets tonight. She had a finish there at the end of the third quarter that was, you know, about as good a finish as I've ever seen by a post player. She has six seven guarding her and she makes a huge basket that, you know, gives us another two points when, you know, it comes comes down to it at the end, you know, we needed that. We're gonna to go to our right hand side. Howard, please go ahead. Howard Magdal, the next. Uh, Monica for you, um, you know, it was a decision to come back. And I'm just wondering if you've reflected on that decision tonight. And Caitlin, just I'm wondering, you know, it seemed you ran into the crowd to go hug someone. You talked about that moment and who you hugged and what that was like. Yeah, I mean, the decision to come back was a, the easiest decision I've ever had to make, quite honestly. Um, I would have been a fool to, to leave this program and leave this family. Um, I would have done it. I obviously knew we had something to prove, but I would have done it no matter what, um, whether we would have come back with no expectations at all. Um, we truly are such a family, and I know you hear it a lot, and it gets kind of old, but um, this is something I'll never forget, being with this group of people, um, getting to do what we love to do every single day, and working together through adversity every single day. So, um, yeah, no, no regret on my end. We're going to we're gonna take a virtual call. We'll go with – oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead, Caitlin. Just I apologize. Just my family in the stands. Um, that's who I was hugging. You know, obviously they've been, like, my biggest supporters all throughout my career, and that's one of the reasons I came to Iowa is because – you know, they wanted to be at all my games, you know, travel around and support. My dad comes to a lot of my stuff and um, just to be able to share the moment with them. And, you know, it's pretty special to all of us to have our families here and be along this ride with them and, you know, people that have sacrificed a lot for us. At this time, we'll take a virtual call. (laughs) Sean, please proceed. Your line is unmuted. Hi, look, Sean Schultz, WNBA Swish. The questions for Caitlin with The game tonight widely being talked about as maybe one of the most watched uh, women's basketball games in history. How does it feel to be a part of something like that? 
Uh, I mean, it's it's incredible. Um, but I think people tune in because they love watching the Iowa Hawkeyes. I truly believe that. You know, I understand I'm an exciting player and people love to watch my game, but we play the right style of basketball. We're a skilled team. Um, you know, we shoot the ball well. Um, but I think it's the joy and the love we have for one another. We smile. We support each other. Um, we high five. Um, you know, it's it's incredible and it's special. And I think, you know, if you want to really see a team, you look at Coach Bluter and what she's built here at the University of Iowa, their teams. Um, and that carries you a really long way. We're going to go to our far left side in the corner. Scott Dixon with the AP. Caitlin, you get the national stage again Sunday when the odds said maybe that might not happen. And you also are chasing the ultimate prize. How do you look at that right now? Yeah, I think, you know, we have to be able to enjoy this for a moment, but also, you know, reset our minds. We didn't come this far just to play in the national championship game. You know, we're here to win it. We're here to hoist the trophy. We're here to cut down another championship net. So, um, you know, we need to take care of our bodies. We need to take care of our minds. Um, but, you know, I think we have one of the best coaching staffs that is going to have us really, really prepared for that game. Um, you know, and LSU is a very, very talented team. Uh, but I think we're going to have a lot of different things that we can throw at them. We're going to change things up. And, you know, it's just we just have to have the belief that we can we can win. We don't have to change anything that we've done, um, you know, is dial in on, a, on player personnel and, you know, be who we are and be who we've been all year long. Take a question to our right. Hi, Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. This is for Monica and or McKenna. Um, so what's it like playing alongside someone like Caitlin, who not only puts up 41 points, but then is so selfless about it? If we could start with Monica. Yeah, I mean, it's really special. Obviously, we get to see all the work she puts in each and every day. So when she wins these awards and is doing all this stuff, it's not really surprising to any of us. We see what goes on behind the scenes. But um, the, the way she's grown as a teammate and a leader on this team has been really special. Um, she really fits into our family atmosphere. She always has. Coach Buda recruits people who she knows are going to make a team, like Caitlin said. So um, it's so fun to play with her, honestly. Getting to watch that every single day, getting to be a part of it, um, you can't make it up. It's one of the coolest things I'll ever do in my life. So <laughs> I love it. And McKenna? I mean, there's honestly no one more, more deserving than Caitlin, um, obviously. And it's been so fun to be able to grow with her these past three years and, what, 92 games now or something that we've started together. And she just elevates everyone around you. And, I mean, even I find myself just standing in awe, like watching her every single day. But um, it's just so fun and so amazing for uh, women's basketball in general and Iowa Hawkeyes. So take a question from the back and the left. Nancy. Nancy Emery, USA Today Sports. Caitlin, uh, Magic Johnson has been name checking you on Twitter throughout the tournament, and there were people um, who, going into this game, were comparing it to Bird and Magic in 79 because of you and Aaliyah. I'm wondering what those comparisons are like, and, and do you think about the fact that this could really elevate the game to a completely different level, just like their title game in 79 did? Yeah, I think, you know, it's really good for our game. And like Coach Daly said last year during all the player of the year discussion is, you know, we need to have these discussions. That's what gets people engaged about women's basketball. It shouldn't just be one person end all be all. Um, you know, people wanted this matchup probably for a couple years, you know, um, and obviously it's the Iowa Hawkeyes versus South Carolina. Um, that's what it was. We won because of we were a team. Um, and, you know, South Carolina is probably one of the deepest teams in America. Um, so, you know, I think it's really, really good for the game. That's what's going to have it going forward. And I think, you know, even when we played Louisville, people were talking about matchups, and that's what got people excited. And I think the viewership showed that um, as well. And I wouldn't be surprised when these numbers come out. I think it'll be, you know, probably the w most watched women's basketball game in the tournament of all time. So, um, yeah, I think it's good for the game. I think it moves it forward, it forward and gets people excited about what's on TV. We're going to take our last, last question, and it'll be a virtual one. David, your line is unmuted. Please proceed. Questions for uh, uh, David Melanger of Sports Talk Philadelphia. Questions for Caitlin. This game tonight marked the matchup of the last two players of the year. Do you feel like you gained new fans in, in this game tonight? And secondly, how does it feel to take down undefeated South Carolina to get to the national championship game? 
Yeah, no, I don't feel like I gained an advantage um, other than, you know, my team winning and advancing to the national championship. Um, you know, that's awesome. But um, Aaliyah is a tremendous player. Um, you know, she had some, they got some tough calls on her tonight. Maybe, you know, in a different game, they're not fouls. But, you know, she was my teammate, and I know how great of a player she is, but even a better person. And that's why she's going to be the number one draft pick, as she should. And, um, you know, it's been fun to watch her success at South Carolina and what she's been able to build there. Um, and I truly mean that. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously it feels really good to take down a team that has won 42 straight basketball games. Um, that's really, really hard to do. Nobody's been able to do it all year. They've been ranked number one in the polls and, you know, all we did was believe and then go out and achieve it. Thank you very much, ladies. Congratulations and look forward to seeing you on Sunday. At this time, we'll open it up for questions for Coach. Coach to our left, the second row. Hi, Lisa. Uh, Jerry Longman with the New York Times. Could you talk about your offensive game plan? And as Caitlin said, you, you, you obviously spotted some weaknesses as far as pick and roll and dragging their big players out of the, you know, out away from the basket. Yeah, you know, we really um, mostly ran our offense that we run every single game. Um, but, you know, when we saw that we were able to score on some ball screens, we tried to emphasize that a little bit more. Um, you know, with McKenna being a three-point shooter, we knew that Aaliyah would have to come out uh, and guard her out there. And McKenna ended up making one of them. Um, but I thought all of her shots, you know, I mean, were, were pretty good. And I would let McKenna shoot. She's a 40% three-point shooter over her four-year career. So, you know, my money's on her making those. And um, it was really just a lot of screening action. And floor balance. I think we have a. I think we do a really good job of balancing the floor. And so, it really, you know, somebody really can't help as much on you. I'm going to take a question in our back on our left hand side. Nancy Emery, USA Today Sports. Um, Lisa, when the matchups are this hyped, um, this anticipated, they don't often live up to it. Caitlin did, and then some. Um, did she even surprise you tonight? Uh, she doesn't really surprise me anymore, but um, I was worried about her getting tired out there. She had to play a lot of minutes. Um, I, I think she's the most phenomenal basketball player in America. I, I just don't think there's anybody like her um, in, in, in so many regards, not only scoring, but passing the ball, handling the ball. I mean, she had the ball in her hand almost all the time tonight against some pretty good defensive players. Um, you know, and then it's her mentality. I think that's what's so special is like she believes in herself. She believes in her teammates. She's so confident, but she's put the work in to deserve to have that confidence. Um, again, you know, she, she said, you know, when we were recruiting her, I want to get to a final four and, you know, it takes one person to believe it. Coach to your right. Uh, Natalie Heverin with the next. Back in October, you said on Locked On Women's Basketball, you wanted to develop Caitlin's game in the paint. How has that happened over the course of the season, and what clicked for her tonight in that regard? Yeah, that didn't come out as planned. Um, I really thought I would be able to create some more post-up options for her um, and just try to develop her game that way. Um, it didn't go so well. She didn't like being down there. Um, Maybe she's just more comfortable 30 feet away from the basket. And so, uh, you know, sometimes it's not good to try to stick a, you know, square peg into a round hole. And instead of, you know, focusing on something that she wasn't maybe always doing to just keep doing what she was doing pretty well. Staying to our right. Donnie Woods with World Exposure Report. Do you think there's been a pivotal moment this season that helped you get to this championship game, maybe going back to, I believe, February 21st against Maryland? You know, I, uh, somebody else asked me, that. I think that was a huge point for us. We got embarrassed there. And, um, you know, we came back and went to work. Uh, I mean, Brenda did a great job of having a defense we hadn't seen. Now we're ready for it. Louisville tried it. Now we're ready for it. Um, so I, I thank her, you know, because if it wasn't for that, we might not have been ready for it down the, down the line. I, you know, you always learn more from losses, unfortunately. I mean, you really do. Um, wins feel better, but you learn a lot from losses. And we learned a lot from that one. And, uh, you know, we came together even more after that loss, I think. Coach, we'll take a question on the left-hand side, front row. Kyle Huseman, Hawker Report. 
Um, kind of a two-part question. Starting off, South Carolina this year had had the tendency to have some lower scoring quarters, um, but their defense had been able to, to keep them close in those quarters. Um, what can you say about your guys' ability to, to take advantage and get you know a nine-point lead in the first quarter? Uh, and then the second part, you know, they've been able to have quarters where they outscore a team 25 to 10, 25 to, to 12. Um, what, what were you guys able to do to make sure that that didn't happen? You kind of answered every single run that they had. Yeah, I mean, I look at this, the score sheet. We, we led for almost 36 minutes of this game. I mean, um, you know, we, we shot the ball very well to begin the, the first quarter. Uh, second quarter, we took a little bit of a nosedive, but then came back in the third and fourth quarters. I mean, 19 of our last 24 quarters, we have shot over 50% from the field. Um, you know, I think we're the only team in America right now that shoots over 50%. Um, and a lot of that, of course, is Caitlin. She's, you know, her adjusted field goal percentage tonight's 56%. But Monica Sanano, you know, 75% shooting. Kate Martin, um, Addison O'Grady came in, who hasn't played a lot of minutes for us. We needed her height tonight. She came in and did a great job for us. Um, so, was that was the second part, <laughs> Kyle? Oh. Yeah, again, the second quarter, we kind of took a little bit of a uh, dive there. I wish Gabby could have nailed that three going into half. That would have been some great momentum for us. But we still went in with a lead. We talked about, hey, you know, 20 minutes. You know, 20 more minutes of basketball it, it, to beat South Carolina, and you got a memory for a lifetime. And, um, you know, they, they did it. They really, I mean, they were feeling really good at halftime, and I thought we came out and shot the ball very well again. Couldn't keep them off the glass. Couldn't, I mean, that's just, Cardoza's just, she's amazing. I mean, she's just so big and keeps the ball high when she O-boards as well. Um, she's just really good. I'm going to take a question in the back left-hand side. Lindsay, go ahead. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Lisa, I'm on the fashion beat. I have to know, were you and Jan wearing matching blazers? We were not. Um, when, when I didn't see her when she left the hotel to come over here to scout, and she walked in like 10 minutes before the game, I said, oh, no. Um, you know, everybody else has like fashion people and makeup people. I got a Revlon flat iron in my hotel room, so that's about as far as I go. Lisa, Howard Mandel at the next. Um, congratulations. The, the uh, Addison O'Grady um, approach tonight. I'm um, just if you take me through what you were expecting from her. Obviously, you know they're big, you're going to need to go big. And if you gave her any kind of specific instructions heading into what turned out to be pivotal 10 minutes for you. Yeah, she played really well, and we needed to have her height just like we did against Colorado. Same thing. Um, you know, Addie hasn't played as much this year um, as maybe we anticipated that she would, but boy, she's put in some valuable min minutes in this tournament for us. Um, we kind of told her, bring out your inner volleyball girl right now um, because she was, a, she was a good high school volleyball player, and we said that's what you got to do out there uh, to try to get those deflections off those rebounds. We're going to take a virtual question. Avery Wiggins, your line is unmuted. You are permitted to speak. Hey, uh, hey, Coach. Congratulations to you. I just, I just want to ask you, and just, you know, you're coaching against Coach Staley, a two-time national champion, and – just tell me, just what is it like coaching against her and how, how, how well, especially game playing against Coach Staley? You know, um, it, it wasn't any different than any other game as far as I really tried not to look down there a whole lot. Um, I don't try to look at interactions of coaches with officials and that sort of thing. Um, so to me, you know, it was just, it was Iowa versus South Carolina. It was, um, you know, she's a great coach, obviously. She's got unbelievable talent, and she's our Olympic coach. I have so much respect for her and her staff, which includes a former Iowa Hawkeye on her staff and Jolette Law. Um, yeah, I, I just have so much. And I guess that's what makes this win even more special is because it was against somebody that has had such a storied career. We have one more virtual question. Sean, your line is open. You are permitted to speak. Hi, Coach. Sean Schultz from WNBA Swish. Uh, you've had such a legendary career, over 30 years of coaching. How does this game uh, rank up there with some of the other ones you've uh, experienced? Oh, this has got to be number one. I don't know. I'm hoping for another good one on Sunday. 
But yeah, anytime you are beating the number one team in the country who hasn't lost all year long, and they're being coached by the Olympic coach, uh, yeah, that's it, it, a pretty good day. That's a pretty good day. Coach, we're going to go to your right hand side. Hi. <laughs> Maria McElwain, Philadelphia Inquirer. So when you were recruiting Caitlin, um, what did you see in her that, might, that you thought was kind of special? And did you ever see games like this happening when she was in high school and you were trying to get her to come to Iowa? Yeah, I mean, she had games uh, that were pretty amazing. You know, the three-point line is a lot closer in high school than it is now. Um, but, you know, recruiting her, um, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out she was a pretty good basketball player. I mean, you could just walk, watch her walk onto the court almost and at a young age know that she is something special. It wasn't any like found underneath a, you know, a rock. I mean, this kid, everybody knew about her in the whole country. She represented USA basketball. Um, so, it, you know, recruiting her was difficult. It, it took a lot of hard work. And I'll tell you, Jan Jensen, my associate head coach, worked harder than anybody um, to get her to come to Iowa. And so I'm really you know, proud of the relationship that we built with her from a, a young age. I think she always felt comfortable around us. Um, it's, you know, really had great conversations on the phone. And so, um, you know, she's a relationship kid. Uh, and that really meant a lot to her. We'll take our final question in the back corner, Coach. Coach Bluter, hi. Aaron Barzilai from Her Hoop Stats. Your shot chart tonight was pretty amazing with all the threes, uh, layups, and free throws. How much of that would you say is really driven by the talent you have and you think that as your program continues forward and the talent changes, uh, you'll be able to replicate that? And how much of that sort of your philosophy you think that's going to endure going forward? It's absolutely our philosophy. I mean, we want to shoot threes. We love shooting threes. It's fun. Everybody gets excited about it. Um, so, yeah, we shoot open threes even in transition. Um, but, yeah, otherwise we know the best next shot is right around the rim. So that is definitely philosophy. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Thank Coach. You. Congratulations. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> As a reminder, Iowa's locker room is closed. However, all five starters will be available tomorrow to speak to the media. A recording of this press conference as well as the written transcript is available on ncaa.veritone.com.